Hey guys, Shadowrock here with your Mega News Roundup for November 8th, 2021. This one is going to be very mobile focused. Mostly because I'm going to Specs graduation for the Air Force on Wednesday and I have some preparations left to do, so if I do miss anything important, I'll definitely cover it next week. Anyways, let's check out the dynamite of a Reploid coming to Rockman X Dive this week. Incoming transmission from sources unknown. Who is this guy? We've never seen him in Rockman X Dive. Until today, that is. It is none other than everybody's favorite secondary antagonist in the X series. Love him or hate him, it's Dynamo, baby! And he's here to say it's time to get serious. Oh, god dang it, X Dive. That's not even a Dynamo quote, that's from X4. What are you guys doing? We're off to a great start. But they did get one thing right. They used the proper theme for Dynamo in this trailer. So I'll forgive you guys for that. Because boy does Dynamo have a sick theme. I'm also digging the artwork that kinda resembles the intro to Mega Man X5. And the character select animation too. He switches on his visor which is pretty cool. Does some sick spins with his D-blade. And then ending off with an obligatory character arch pose. It's so good to see Dynamo here and dive finally. Many people have been asking for him ever since the game came out. And I'll definitely take a new X character being added to the roster that's not an alternate form, an X armor, another Zero, or a What If character. Nope, we're finally expanding the X series roster for dive. Which unfortunately doesn't happen that often considering this is supposed to be an X game. Capcom should totally take my idea about calling this Rockman Cross Dive instead. But I digress! Dynamo is going to be another permanent character and what are his skills? Skill 1 is D-Blade. Dynamo throws his boomerang like D-Blade, which obviously goes out and then comes back. Additionally, it can go through landscapes and barriers. Not too shabby for a permanent character. Then skill 2 is Subami Gosby or something like that. I don't know these names. Basically, it's Dynamo's dash attack from his original fight in X5. He will lunge forward and then lash of his whip. Very similar to one of Sigma's skills actually. And I would complain about the laziness with that, but it is technically a move Dynamo had originally, so I can't really complain that much. Although, if it was me, for the second skill, I would have gave Dynamo his lightning screen nuke attack that he had in the original fight. That attack to me is more unique to Dynamo and iconic compared to what he ended up with. But, oh well. Skill 2 also makes Dynamo immune to all damage while he is slashing, just like with Sigma and all the other characters that dash. The trailer also reveals that when Dynamo is equipped with a buster or a melee weapon, you can increase his attack power and reduce damage taken. So it definitely sounds like that Dynamo is going to get the weapon expert passive skill that gives him a bonus for having both the buster and the melee weapon just like Raffalo's Armor X. And that is accurate to Dynamo. He does use a buster in X6 at least. And obviously he has his sword. So nice call there, Dive. In conclusion, is Dynamo a good character or is he just there to waste everybody's time? I would say he's looking pretty all right, at least for a permanent character. He's not gonna be meta, I don't think. But I do think, for the most part, aside from that skill 2, which is accurate, so it's fine, though it's not the flashiest, I think Dynamo fans are at least going to be happy with him. If you are prepared to WAIL for Dynamo here, his banner will be live this Wednesday, November 10th to November 17th. One week, everybody. Coincidentally for me, November 10th is the day of Specs graduation, so I unfortunately can't have a dive stream that day. But I'll definitely check in with Dynamo and everything else later on in the week. Most likely Friday, Saturday. So while I'm gone, definitely let me know if you get Dynamo, 
if you're pulling for him and and how much do you like his kit and other dive news listen i don't support nebula joy's version anymore the global version and all that but some people would be mad if i didn't at least mention this but mega man x dive is indeed launching in europe and latin america this wednesday on november 10th so for latin america that does include south america central america and mexico and for the european version that is for the entirety of europe except for turkey and that is actually because turkey is covered by the taiwan version of dive anyways languages include french spanish portuguese russian and german although I question how good the translation is actually going to be. But I digress, pre-registration is available on the Google Play and Apple Store if you are indeed interested. I just don't really recommend it because Nebula Joy exists. They're the guys handling those versions, obviously. And yeah, if you want to know why I don't recommend it, check out the last few Mega News videos. I went into it pretty hard. To sum it up though, they haven't been a very good company. However, I will give them some credit. They've done a couple of good things recently, such as adding free tin poles to the Halloween Ale banner after everybody complained to them enough about it. So if nothing else, they are at least listening, and I hope they continue listening. You know, just a reminder that if all else fails, the Taiwan version that is available in English is always there for you to play. It's not that hard to get it. It's actually as simple as going to their official website. At least for Android users, of course. It's also the most up-to-date version, considering it was the very first one. So that's why I've always been prioritizing covering that version, and not global. I mean, you guys have heard me the last few weeks. Whenever I talk about global, it's always, What is Nebula Joy breaking today now? Not so much the actual content, because, well, we've covered it last year. Literally, if you want to know what I think about some of the stuff coming out in Global, all we gotta do is check out our live streams from last year and the news videos from last year, and you got my thoughts right there. Barring any new glitches that get introduced, because Nebula Joy. So in the interest of not wasting your time and not wasting my time, as well as keeping some of the negativity out of the videos. This right here is going to be the last time I'm talking about Mega Man X Dive Global, unless something really spicy happens. So for you lovely folks that take issue with me using Mega Man X Dive or Rockman X Dive, no, there's no need for confusion. From now on, it's all Rockman X Dive all day every day, baby. Except for the title, uh, which I do that because of search results reasons. I mean, this YouTube channel, in case you're not aware, is based in the USA. So while I do try to be as universal as possible, at the end of the day, I do have to cater to the US audience, my home country. And most people are going to type in Mega Man X Dive, not Ruckman, so it's just a way to actually get the videos on your screen so I can inform you. Also, let's not forget that even Capcom Taiwan is starting to rebrand to Mega Man X Dive on places like Steam and even a couple of the mobile app stores too. I don't know if it means anything necessarily, but hey, they technically use Mega Man X Dive too, whether it be for algorithm reasons or whatever. Coincidentally, I'm also using it for algorithm reasons. That's literally it actually. I've always used Rockman X Dive in the thumbnails, in the descriptions, etc, etc. I don't even know why I'm explaining myself. I don't even have to. So yeah, moving on. Now for something way more exciting. And that is Mega Man X Command Mission content. Oh yeah, baby. That comes in the form of Teppen's latest card pack titled Mission of Ruin. And yes, there is quite a few Mega Man cards in this pack that we gotta talk about. Every single one of them being Command Mission themed. And there's way more Command Mission representation here than in past card packs even. We got some faces like the Prion, Mog Gentra, Ferrum, Scarface, Epsilon himself. We even get to see Epsilon simp for another character, that's pretty funny. We also have Botos, Incentis, Nana, and last but not least, Ale! No, not that Ale. 
the command mission ale. Remember that guy? Well, most of you probably don't because unfortunately Capcom hasn't re-released Mega Man X command mission. They need to get on that. Between dive and tapin, man, it, the time is right. Now I gotta say, the artwork for these cards are phenomenal. There's some really cool looking ones here. But I'll pick just one that is the most interesting to me as a command mission nut. And that is the card titled Death and Betrayal. Which depicts the very uncomfortable scene from the original game where Botos turns on the cadres of the Rebellion army and extracts the warhead key from Ferrum so he can claim the Super Force medal in the missile for himself. This scene was actually censored in the original game. So this artwork right here is the only visual representation we have now of what this extraction process actually looked like. All we know is that in the original command mission game, Farron wasn't looking too hot after that. And we can see why here. Once again, I'm just loving all the command mission love here. Keep it up guys because I am here for it. In the merchandising department, out of nowhere, Hori has announced a Mega Man themed Nintendo Switch Split Pad Pro. For those not in the know, the Split Pad Pro is essentially Joy-Cons, but they are much larger and meant to mimic the feel of a real controller. And this is really exclusively for handheld mode on the Switch. As the Split Pad Pro is missing a lot of features the actual Joy-Cons have, such as rumble, amiibo support, and gyro controls. However, the Split Pad Pro does have a turbo button and assignable rear triggers. However, I heard those rear triggers only really coincide with each side of the controller. So let's say you're using the right side, you can only use A, B, Y, X. And if you're using the left side, it's only the D-pad and the control stick essentially. So that's a bit of a bummer, but whatever. This is still a really cool option for people who exclusively play in handheld mode and wants to play comfortably with a controller sized Joy-Con. And by the way, it does work with the OLED model of the Switch that just came out. So you can definitely take advantage of that sweet OLED screen that's a bit larger too. Talking about the design itself then, it features Mega Man and a bunch of the Robot Masters. Obviously, they're all from Mega Man 2 from what I'm seeing here. Uh, that's not too surprising. Still, it looks pretty cool to me. And if you are interested in picking this up, you can pick it up from Amazon for 60 bucks. Now, what's really interesting about this Split Pad Pro in particular is that it's launching on December 17th, 2021. Hmm, what else is on December 17th? Oh yeah, Mega Man's anniversary. Wow, what a coincidence. That's some great timings, and now you can celebrate Mega Man's 34th anniversary with a Split Pad Pro for your Nintendo Switch. It's not the worst way to celebrate, I suppose. Though, an announcement for Rockman Tyson or something would be nice too. Once again, I will leave a link to the product in the description below. And you know what, it's gonna be an affiliate link too, because we can actually do that now. And all that means is that we get a small kickback from your purchase at no additional cost to you. So hey, if you would use that link to support the channel, that would be very nice of you. While you're at it, a quick reminder that the Mega Man Maverick Hunters Field Guide is also available, and it's been discounted quite a bit recently too. I have my own copy of the book, and it's indeed really nice just to read through everything and remind yourself of all these different characters in the X series and a number of different things like right armors, X's armors, and so on. One of the best parts about the book is some of the new artwork in there too for a few of the characters. It's no secret by now that I'm actually in the credits in this book, so I can definitely vouch that this book is pretty good and you're in good hands with it. I've been asked before how I actually contributed to the Maverick Hunters Field Guide, and the best way I can describe it is I was essentially a consultant for a few things regarding trivia for some of the characters. But let me tell you about my personal favorite contribution to this book. So at one point the question became what kind of artwork should they use to represent Absolute Zero from Mega Man X Command Mission? 
That's when I recalled that a regular Saturn had his own HD screenshots of all the different characters and a bunch of different command mission things. He essentially went through the entire game and took really high quality shots of pretty much everything you can imagine from the game. So that's when I suggested to them that they should use his assets. It was really good stuff. And I didn't know if it would actually work out, but eventually the book came out and there he was, a regular Saturn in the credits. And that absolute zero in there? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's from his HD assets. So, you know, that felt pretty cool, vouching for a member of the community that does some good stuff, and they got featured. It's awesome. In conclusion, the Maverick Hunter Field Guide is definitely a community effort. A ton of familiar faces helped out with it. Protodude helped with some of it too. And of course, I gotta give the big shout outs to David and Nadia, the actual authors of the book. And David in particular, who by the way runs the Mega Man Network, for considering consulting me at all about some of the stuff for the book. I appreciate that, man. So yeah, if you want to pick up the book for yourself, I will have an affiliate link to that too in the description below. If you have the book already or are planning to pick it up, definitely let me know what you think about it. And I believe the book is supposed to show up in places like Barnes and Nobles as well. So if you see the book out in the wild, hit me up on Twitter or something because I want to see that. And yeah, I just want to say if you are planning to pick it up or have already picked it up, thank you so much for supporting the Maverick Hunter Field Guide. As long as this book is successful, we may get more where that came from. Just putting that out there. Anyway, of that said, our last news story for today is, well, there's another Rockman Chan chapter. We're getting close to the end game on the Rockman Chan manga series now. And this one is basically just Mega Man getting another funny looking weapon and learning more about the group known as the Men 6. There will be a link in the description as always if you want to check it out, although it is in Japanese at the moment. If you want to read more English translations though, Midori has cranked out another couple translations for Rockman's son, now covering chapter 7 and 8. I'll have a link in the description to those as well. Guys, that's it for today's Mega News Roundup. I want to thank you all so much for watching, and as I'm heading out to see Spec in just a couple of days, I just want to thank everybody that helped out with the Metroid fundraiser marathon we had recently. The support on that has been freaking phenomenal. It blew my expectations out of the galaxy, that's for sure. And definitely, you guys really helped make this upcoming trip way more feasible for both of us. So from the bottom of my heart and Spec's heart too, we're internally grateful for you guys. I only hope that the content, both past, present, and future, is a good enough way to say thank you to you guys because you guys deserve it. There's still a few more donation incentive things to do for the Metroid Marathon before it ends for good, and most of those are co-ops and races, so it might take a hot minute to get everybody together to actually do those things, but it will definitely get done. That is a promise. And hey, it should be a lot of fun too. And that's pretty much all I got for announcements. Just know that there isn't going to be a dive stream this Wednesday like there usually is. That's going to be on Friday and Saturday instead, because obviously I'll be out of town. And now let's keep the thank yous rolling with our generous channel members. Thank you to every single one of you who supports the channel through the channel membership program. And especially thank you to GA class supporters Adrian Cauldron, LML123, Chaos Bankai, Vince Crystals, Rico Syndrome, and Austin Buford. You guys are rocktastic. And... For all things Mega Man, stay tuned to Shadowrock CX. We'll see you next week for the next Mega News and this weekend for the streams and all that. Until then, rock on and Jetta! <laughs> <laughs>